Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, again, I will make reference to my, uh, my Wednesday class, the uh, Anyone Can Pray, where we talked about the beginning of Kabbalat Shabbat. And if you were there, you heard me make reference to uh, one of my favorite bits of over-literalism, uh, where in the psalm it says that the rivers clap hands. And uh, there are some that are so uh, shackled to the concept of a superficial, literal reading of the text that they claim that there must have been some kind of actual hands that clapped for rivers in the biblical time, even if we don't have them. Indeed, this is one of the many uh, excuses for literalism, is that uh, if it doesn't match what we have, nature has changed. Things are different now than they used to be. Uh, we know this to be nonsense, of course, because we actually still live in the natural world that was uh, still around 2,000, 3,000, and 10,000 years ago. Uh, we have all of the artifacts, both of humanity and nature, to show us that things have been very stable for a very long time. And yet, there are some that still are committed to this. Now, when it comes to something like clapping hands of a river, the error can be a little um, visible. We can chuckle a little bit about it. But there are other topics where this form of superficial reading can get one into a great deal of trouble. One such phrase occurs in tomorrow's Haftarah, taken from the very first chapter of the book of Yirmiyahu, the book of Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah was a prophet at the end of the first temple days. Uh, he was there at the threshold as Babylon was about to uh, sweep across the nation and to uh, eventually lay it low and lead us into captivity, and he warned people over and over. But the first chapter is about his uh, election, about him being appointed as a prophet, about him rising to the occasion, kicking and screaming and against his will. Uh, much like Moshe, Moses, uh, Jeremiah was not a pick me, pick me sort of person. Uh, he did not feel that he was fit to do this job. He did not feel that he would be taken seriously. Much like Moses felt that he lacked the uh, eloquence to do the job that God was asking of him. And God turns to Jeremiah and says, but I formed you. I knew you when you were still in the womb. Aha, say those who are bent on superficial literalism. God knew him in the womb. Therefore, there must have been a personhood in the womb to be known. A little proto-Jeremiah. And that therefore concludes, we could never terminate a pregnancy. Bing bada boom, thank you very much for following my TED talk. Uh, we're done, I have proved my point. Well, all that you have proved is that you are incapable of reading the text within context, within the style and literary uh, form of the biblical time. Uh, that is not at all what it was trying to say. We know this uh, both from our own ability to compare it to other texts, but also because of how Jewish law handles this text, which is to say, it does not consider it to be a prohibition of abortion at all. Uh, it does not consider it to be anything more than a hyperbolic statement trying to un help Jeremiah understand that God created all life, and if God created all life, then God created Jeremiah to eventually rise to this point where he would have this job. That does not mean that every pregnancy has to have that same conclusion. It means that God is trying to reassure Jeremiah, I've got you, I know who you are, I know your strengths and I know your weaknesses, and I still want you to be my prophet. The same way that God explains to Moshe that when Moshe complains about his uh, slowness of speech, his difficulty, and God says, who do you think invented talking? Who do you think invented speech? Likewise, that is not just trying to uh, toot God's horn about that level of creation. It is trying to assuage Moses' fears of his own inadequacy and let him know that if God considers him fit, then he will indeed be fit. When we look at the halakha, of course, it is even strongerly, uh, it is even strongerly, I speak Englishly, uh, it is even more uh, strongly argued that indeed this verse does not mean what many people will claim in the modern world it means. Because in the halakha, it is uh, categorical that in many cases, uh, abortion is permissible. And in some cases, tragic cases, abortion is required. It is mandated. It is a obligation under Jewish law. Not merely permitted, but we have no choice but to perform the procedure, specifically when it is the life of the mother that is in danger. 
This is not uh, allowing us to have an abortion under those circumstances. It is, in fact, requiring us to have an abortion under those circumstances. Now, this is one of the difficulties when we have people who will claim to read the biblical text and come to certain conclusions. Um, while they are certainly permitted to make their own interpretations and conclusions for themselves, we as Jews are quite um, alarmed when others will use those interpretations to then pass restrictions upon our ability to live up to our interpretation of those very same texts. In Jewish law, we need to be free to be able to practice Jewish um, practice, to be able to practice Judaism, as our tradition has told us the Torah and Jewish um, legal theory has been telling us to do so for more than 2,000 years. It is not just a question of interpretation. That's for the inside group. It is also a question of freedom. Because if we allow this freedom to be taken away, then others will take, others will say, aha, uh -huh, well, you know, also I dislike the way that some people think of slaughtering animals. We should pass legislation to not allow animals to be slaughtered in a Jewish way. Indeed, there are many countries in the world uh, that have begun limiting the process of slaughter to such an extent that it is hard for Jews to get kosher meat in those places. There are others who are beginning to pass laws because of their own interpretation that outlaw circumcision, that brit milah should no longer be performed. Uh, these are issues that we must continue to fight for. And while it might seem a little more glamorous and a little easier to imagine we are fighting for the right to have kosher food, we are fighting for the right to have brit milah, nonetheless we must also fight for the right in tragic circumstances to also be able to perform an abortion according to Jewish belief as is necessary. This is a matter literally of life and death and one that we must continue to struggle with. I know it's not a fun topic and it is certainly a complicated topic uh, there's no way I can cover all that Judaism has to say on this point in just this short span. But I would be happy to continue that discussion, both during our own egg dessert, but also in uh, more depth and more detail, should anyone want uh, further instruction on this point. Shabbat Shalom.